green light by Steph. So here we go. Casio World with Cascade. Good luck and have fun. Uh, hi, my name is Kezcade. I will be your representative for Super Mario World tonight. Uh, it's six in the morning and I'm exhausted on comms with me. Would you like to introduce hi, yourself? I'm third wall. I will also be here. And he's also I'm exhausted. I'm pretty tired too. Perfect. <laughs> We're both tired. All right, let's do it. Cassio Mario World, before we start, I would like to say that this game is exceedingly difficult. And if you haven't seen Kaizo before, uh, we're gonna die a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. So, uh, let's do it. Uh, we're going to start now in three, two, one, go. Okay, so starting off, uh, we got a little brief message. You're gonna be seeing this room here at the end of the run, but, uh, otherwise, let's do it. So, here is Kaizo. This is Casio Mario World. This is one of the hardest Casio hacks that is RTAable and still fun. Uh, so we're going to be doing our best here. It is still here. fun, we swear. Uh, <laughs> it is still fun, but this is probably one of the dumbest things I have ever done in my life. So, let's get run started. We're going to be going... This game has an exceptional soundtrack, and you're going to be noticing uh, throughout the run... Uh, a wonderful soundtrack made by the creator of this hack, or name of this ROM game, uh, Wyatt, uh, who ported all of these uh, songs themselves. They're all from real world artists. This is actually the, the Reeling it, by Passion Pit. The Reeling by Passion Pit. Um, so starting out here, we got this uh, bullet jump, uh, a pretty classic trope in uh, Mario fan games uh, from a long time. So, we're going to be doing some bullet jumps, a little boom, a little bam. You know, we're, we're living life here. We're, we're living large. Uh, this obstacle right here, right before the checkpoint, is exceptionally difficult. Hit, hitting those chucks so, uh, on both sides is, is ridiculously difficult. It's very hard to do. It's incredibly difficult. So, uh, we're going to try our best here. Um, but in the meantime, Sky, while we get back, would you like to drop our first donation? I would be happy to. So we have $150 from Preskane, who says, excited to watch Cascade crush this Casio run. We also have $25 from Silent Snake, who says, happy to donate to such a worthy cause. Really proud of Kez and all the hard work he's put into Casio. He makes a very hard game look easy. The Kaizo community is behind you, Kez. Back to you. Appreciate it. So what we're doing here, we're doing something kind of special. Uh, we're going to be doing an unintended strat uh, that I stole from the task, actually. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to grab P-Speed, and we're going to use P-Speed to speed up this section of the uh, of the game, if I can get it. It's very difficult, uh, but nice. we nailed it. Easy so. skip. Easy skip. That's like a three or four second time save. Uh, you're going to see it again. <laughs> Just a so, reminder, this this yeah. is this is by far the most difficult Kaizo mod that has been showcased at GDQ, so there's there's gonna be a lot of deaths. <laughs> That's what happened. We're going to die more times than anyone else in the history of GDQ. And uh, I hope you're ready, because we're cozy, you know, it's six in the morning, we're chilling, we had coffee. So we need this bullet, actually, for the rest of this level. Uh, we need to make sure this bullet does not die. So we're gonna do a little like shimmy shake. You know, we're doing a jive. We're, we're having fun. That muncher uh, staircase boom, bam, is so unethical. <laughs> it's pretty unethical. And you're going to be seeing throughout the run, uh, there's going to be a theme. Uh, and that theme is unethicality. Uh, unethicality and good tunes. So that's level one. This is a nine level uh, game. And uh, if I can get through it, at all, I'll be so really th happy. So this level so, actually has a, uh, a really big skip in it as well. Uh, you can pretty much skip like 50% of the second half of this level, and it's really handy because it's it super, also, super tedious and difficult. It is tedious, and also this level is great because it teaches you how to breathe. 
Uh, it, and it does so right in your ear for the whole level. <laughs> <laughs> Who here is passionate about reading? I know I am. And this level is a reminder every single time. Fun fact. So this song, every level in this game is named after the song that's from. This song is called Sleep Dealer. And the, I like to tell people this. The samples in this song are from a 1989 Wrigley Spearmint commercial, and that's what all of the breathing sound effects are. Is that so, true? Fun. Is that a real true fact? That is that is an official Cascade in the morning fact. <laughs> Straight to your ears. I love that you know that. <laughs> Dude, are you serious? I show that to the chef. How have I missed that? <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, because no one wants to pay attention to me. Anyways, <laughs> uh, so in this level, if you're familiar with Yoshi's Island at all, you see these enemies. They're called Bumpies. In Yoshi's Island, they're fun and cute. In Super Mario World, they are uh, evil and awful, and Third Wall has made levels with them, and I don't like him because Thank of that. You. So we're going to be using these Bumpies to traverse this level. Um, we need to make sure for this section right here, we're going to stay to the left to bait the bumpy left. And we need to do a bounce here. If we don't do that little bounce, we'll actually die because otherwise the bumpy itself won't jump over a one tiled gap. Uh, anyways, so Third World mentioned a big skip. Here's a skip for you. It skips half of this section and it uses bumpies. And I, third wall, can you guess what the name of this is? I think it's called Bumpy Skip. You're right. You did it. You nailed it. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Welcome to Bumpy <laughs> Skip. Yeah, you did it. I'm proud of you. <laughs> uh, so this is nice. Bumpy Skip. It nice. lets you skip half of the it's, section. It's the insanely precise, too. Level. It's really, really difficult. It's <laughs> extremely yeah. precise. Um, and speaking of precise, ooh, do you like precise Bumpy Jumps? Because oh, I don't. But too bad, because we're doing one here at the very end of this level. Check this out. This last jump is, is so, really, really rough in, in the first place. This is one of the hardest jumps in the game. Bumpy hitboxes are just terrible. First Yo, try. Nice. Easy, <laughs> is the easiest game in GDQ. <laughs> oh, my God. Literally the easiest game I've, I've ever played. I don't know about you. <laughs> Hitting that Bumpy on the side like that is so difficult. It's so insanely difficult. It's so hard. It's so hard. There's going to be a lot of things that I miss in this run, and I'm going to feel sad and probably cry after stream. But that's okay. Anyways, uh, so the third level, this is called Child Soldier, and the theme of this level is uh, on and off blocks and ball and chains. Also cake. And if you don't know what I mean, find out soon. feel free to just <laughs> listen to the song, and you'll, <laughs> you'll get it. It's fine. This is also the only level that actually <laughs> laughs at you as you play it. That's true. It goes, oh, you want to beat the level? <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, this is actually one of the hardest levels in the run, in my opinion. Uh, it's a it's a huge reset point, and I hate it. And uh, have fun. We're actually going to be doing a big one cycle here uh, that saves a bunch of time right here. And if you see me slow down at all, it means I messed up. Uh, but I didn't because we're gaming. Oh. But I died because I'm not gaming. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I've literally never died that way before because it's GDQ. And if you're not dying in GDQ, what are you even doing with your this life? This is also probably one of the more traditional levels in the run. Yeah, it, it's definitely like one of the most. This, ha this uh, fan game uh, definitely tries to be... Very unique. Sorry, he's got to focus for a second because hitting these on off switches is really tight. Then you got to get into that one tile gap as well. And then focus so you can time all of these runs, which are all slightly different timings, to get across the one tiles as well. Nice. This level also has. Um, this is one of the only levels where I use sound cues. So there's a lot of places where if you just see me stop talking, it's because I'm trying to big brain when I have small Like right brain. here. Here is somewhere where you have to focus because as soon as you hear the on-off switch get hit, you have to jump. Uh, there, it's actually a pretty tight frame window to make that jump. Yeah, I don't know the exact time framing, but it's very small. I want to say I was told it was about like three to six frames, somewhere around there. It's, that sounds about right. It's exceedingly small. Um, so this is one of the places where I use... Uh, sound, uh, sound. Oh, yeah, and chat, anytime you see him also, get a checkpoint, feel free to spam H 
H, H is definitely worth spamming. Every time I get a checkpoint, I'm basically breathing a sigh of relief. Also, oh, anyway, so this part, I'm gonna jump to the side here. This respawns the ball and chain, which makes you be able to do it faster. Also, those on and off switches at the top, if I hit them, I will die because I won't be able to get past the obstacle coming up. Really creative obstacle. Um, very creative obstacle, but you can see that, like, uh, I'm struggling a little bit on this because it's just a very, very tight frame window, and it's just like there's a lot you gotta pay attention to. You got sound cues and very difficult. But, um, Sky, would you like to give us a donation while I try to get past this? Part? I would love to. So we have a $250 donation from Hank underscore Sinatra who says, Hey, Kez. It's great to see such an awesome person representing the Mario community this year. Best of luck on this ridiculous game. Uh, thanks, Hank. Thanks, Hank. Also, by the way, here's another fun Kez Kate fact in the morning. <laughs> Hank Sinatra uh, has the best hair in the Mario community, and it's not even, like... Like, you can't even question it. That's just a straight I don't fact. think anyone even comes close. Yeah. By far the best hair in the Mario community. So, anyway, I'm going to try to focus up here real quick. Yeah, some of these last jumps are really, uh, really tough to time because uh, you have to pay attention to these very rapidly changing on-off blocks. Also, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nice. eight. Grab the shell, Oof. give the pokey a little kiss. <laughs> and then we're done. Easy, easy. Get a little smooch on the cheek and you leave for, for work. You know, you hit that goal post, you're like, later, I'll see you. I'll see you. Because I just want you to know then, that Hank is calling oh. you a liar. Hank? <laughs> how dare? Don't you how dare? dare. All right, all right. Be all right, this is really important. All right, before I enter this level, Twitch chat, this is important. We cannot beat this level. I'm going to stall for time. We have a rule. We cannot beat this level unless you spam dance emotes as hard as possible. This is important. This is called Party Pug Palace. Let's go. We need your most powerful dance emotes. Now, quickly to explain this level, the way this level works is there are yellow spikes and there are orange spikes. And whenever you jump, it moves the position of the spike. So you're going to be seeing me do a lot of uh, weird jumps to manipulate how the spikes are positioned uh, for me to get through this level. Also, the, the hip the hitboxes um, don't make any sense on these spikes. Uh, they When they're up, they're up. When they're moving down, they're up. <laughs> so anytime you see any part of the spike, the entire hitbox of the spike is actually present, basically. Yeah, that's because Super Mario World is a fantastic uh, video game. Yeah, very well made. So we're going to be doing some jumps. We're going to grab this piece, which what we're going to do is we're going to toss it in the air like we just don't care. Boom, bam, easy. We're going to toss it here, and we're going to land on it. And we're going to make sure that we don't screw up, because this is GDQ, and you do not screw up in GDQ. See, it's because you were spamming yeah, dancing. It's illegal. It's so easy. Because we're... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We can't be. All right, check this out. Guaranteed yump. Oh, Guaranteed God. yump. This Come is V-Chat. Yeah, Ooh, easy baby. Peasy. Let's go. Easy. Easy. <laughs> uh, would you like to explain yumps uh, real yump, quick before we go Yump is a, a frame-perfect jump off of a switch in a switch palace. Uh, you The frame that you hit the switch, you have to hit the jump button, basically. Uh, they're harder to me yeah, in this game because there's a pause to play the new music. <laughs> so it, it makes the yeah, timing for the jump harder for me. <laughs> It's weird. Uh, and speaking of music, this level has the most stressful music of all time. Yeah, this, this music gives me anxiety. Um, so, so this is basically a giant auto-scroller where we're being chased by a Pepto-Bismol bubble, um, which, you know, you might be into, you might not be, and that's okay. I'm not, so I'm going to try to get away from it. But essentially, this level is a giant auto-scroller where we need this bubble to, um, to progress. And there's going to be a point where I physically cannot talk. And I'll let you know when that's coming He very up. casually <laughs> just did that uh, ride up with the, with the spikes above his head. That's actually ridiculously precise as well. You have to be all the way on the right side of the bubble. And the bubble hitbox is a square inside of that circle. So you can't actually see the full hitbox. Uh, the, the, okay, this is where I cannot yeah, this talk. Is, this is very stressful too. He has to do this long ride all the way up through these boomerangs uh, while controlling this bubble. Uh, 
So what's really difficult about this is you're bouncing very quickly, and you have to re-grab the jump button to get little hops. Uh, and if you re-grab too early, you can hop way too early, and if you re-grab too late, you hop too late, and either one of those things is very easy to do because the frame window is so short. But he made it look easy. Yeah. Easy? This is actually the easiest game I've ever played in my life. <laughs> this is also the only game i played in my life, so not much competition, so... Uh, from the second half of this level, we now move into Mountain Dew Bubble territory. Uh, so you get to pick or choose your flavor. I'm I love Mountain the chunky death one. blocks in this level too that he added. Yeah. Also, <laughs> the um, the death blocks in this game they're all like chunky and they're like green and you don't want to run into them, but you kind of do. They're kind of fun. Um, so coming up at the very end of this level. Thurgo, would you like to explain how boo clouds work? Uh, so boo clouds are actually, they, they spawn in based on Mario's position on screen. So you have to jump to the bubble at the right time, and then you have to make sure that you move on the bubble in a, such a way that you don't hit them. Also, the ones that spawn off screen have no hitbox. So if you see Kez go through any of the boos, then he, uh, it's just because they spawned slightly off screen. Yeah, so there's a chunk of, of the booze where I'm not worried about them. I'm not going to take any damage. Okay, so this next level, much like the Red Switch, you have an important job, uh, Twitch chat. Anytime you hear the song say the letter E, I need you to spam your heart out. And it's going to happen a lot. But before that, let me try to explain how this blue block oh, works. This blue block is weird. It maintains your momentum. So if I just hold it and jump, I go straight up and I never fall down. If I throw it and catch it, I go up slightly slower. If I catch it while moving down, I have like slow uh, movement. It's really weird to explain. It's it's incredibly difficult to explain actually. I think that was pretty it's good. I weird, get it. We, that was good. You did good. That's another yeah, cascade fact it. in the morning. I think that was great. That's a cascade fact that <laughs> I can explain things. So we need to use this blue block to get through this level. And uh, that's not good because the blue block sucks. Um, but we're going to do our best while learning about the alphabet. Chat, what's your favorite letter? I think it's E. I think my favorite letter is E um, also. <laughs> oh my, me This is too. a song I believe. We have so much in common. This is, this is by uh, 10 Tricks Point Never, isn't it? The Field. Oh, this is The Field. No, this is, is this by the, the field? field. This is The Field. So the, this the, is the, the two big artists in this in this uh, mod are 10 Tricks Point Never and The Field. And the Field did the previous yes. level and this level. Uh, 10 Tricks Point Never did most of the other levels, <laughs> uh, with exception of the reeling. Yeah, the two, the two Switch Palaces are by The Field. Most of the songs are by Onio Tricks Point Never, whatever the hell you pronounce it. Uh, and then the final, the boss, uh, the final boss is actually by the, the creator of this mod. Um, so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna let this push me forward. It's gonna let me spawn the saw faster so I don't have to worry about it. And we just dealt with a P-switch and we're about to game our heart out. Check this out, first try. Yeah, nice. Yeah, Everything man. that happened uh, in the last like 10 seconds was ridiculously precise and difficult to execute. And we kind of just <laughs> glossed over it. <laughs> oh, baby, Double. look at that. This is that. a blessed run, two yumps. This is a blessed run. This is, this is, a, this is a Kesuke exclusive. Got that double yaw, baby. Woo. <laughs> okay. So that was fun. Now we're slowly getting to things that are less fun. Uh, so let's check this out. So we're going into the next level. The next level is called, uh, I don't remember. It's got chain chomps. Everyone loves chain chomps. The way chain chomps work is they track your X position. And so what you're going to be seeing in this level is I have to do a lot of very precise movement uh, on the right side of Chain Chomps. If you ever see me bouncing off of a Chain Chomp, I am essentially uh, trying to maintain as much of myself on the right side of the Chain Chomp as possible. If I'm even a pixel off, uh, the Chain Chomp will dart left and I will die. Uh, so that's fun. It's especially fun because um, they bounce up and down. And in Mario World, when an enemy is moving up and Mario is moving up, uh, you die. So if you if you if you yeah. hit them on the way up, there is a high likelihood that you'll die even if you land on it. So <laughs> So right here, I have to make sure I'm on the right constantly. Also, you just saw me standing underneath that chain chomp. That's not intended, um, but it's way more fun to do no work. That was that was very so. spicy the way that you just jumped on that chomp. <laughs> that was not intended. 
Uh, getting Luke, under this listen. this wall of chomps the first time is borderline impossible. <laughs> yeah, so easy. We're at the checkpoint. Oh my God! Just kidding. We're gonna game. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some peace beat strats on, gonna... uh, on on this half of the level that are really sweet. This. So the the creator of this game, why he wants you to do all this other stuff, we're going to ignore what he wants us to do in the game, and we're going to do a strat where we gain peace speed off of these instead of sliding. And what that's going to let us do is it's going to let us maintain peace speed on the ground when we get to this giant chain chomp, which is going to drastically speed up our movement on it. So we just could be like, bam, 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 dead. And that's okay, because we reset it uh, to try again, because it's, RNG it's manipulation. 6.30 in the morning. It's RNG manip to make it not 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> um. uh, otherwise, you have to jump on this chomp probably about a dozen more times, and it is very difficult. Uh, I, it's ex this second half is this, extremely the, difficult, especially in a casual This, this is one of the only speed strats that I think reduces the difficulty of the section. Uh, most of them, in oh, most of them increase it, but this one definitely decreases it. Uh, getting this guy so to go right, right is like, so stupid hard. <laughs> it's very difficult, and if you don't do it right, they will ascend uh, into Mario and kill you. And then you. you just have to jump on a bunch of Rexes. Easy. Yeah, and it's fun. I mean, that's what their life is for. You see that chomp going crazy up there? He's so happy. I'd be happy, too. I'd, I'd feel right, unchanged. Don't, don't mess up the end. <laughs> don't mess up the end. Let me get a sip of water real quick. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So that was fun. That was fun. That was exciting. So uh, in the speed run, we just beat seven levels. And you'd be thinking, my Kez, we're almost done with the run. And I'd say you're correct. However, uh, this is now where the run starts. This is the hardest levels in the game. This is this is so one of the hardest levels I think I've ever played, period. Ever played. This level took me 15 hours my first time. So this is the water level. Uh, and let's read this message box to try to read what it says. Oh, Kez, you missed it. Right, let me try again. Oh, just kidding, nerd. You can't get it because this isn't actually a water level. Uh, let me introduce you to pressurized water. This is a custom mechanic uh, where instead of swimming, you get exactly, you get one, we'll call it a swim. You get one swim. And once you get that swim, you're no longer allowed to swim anymore. You plummet back to the ground. And so by holding up, you get a high swim. By just doing a normal, you get a small swim. And by hold, hitting down, you can stop your upward momentum. And so every bounce and jump in this level, I'm gonna kill myself real quick, is uh, controlled not using the jump button by using the up and down button. And uh, much to Twitch chat's delight, I'm going to attempt an incredibly difficult skip that I, I am going to die to. Uh, I'm gonna try something called the shell skip, which if I can get it, will save 15 seconds. If I don't get it, I will die and look like a fool and everyone will make fun of me. I don't think anyone so, will make fun of you for missing shell skip. Shell skip is, is honestly, uh, we, we didn't, we no, didn't think that it was RTA required. viable until Kez found a strat for it. Uh, it was in the test, and we were like, we're Here not even going to attempt this uh, because it is so difficult. Uh, luckily, he can it's incredibly luckily he difficult. can retry it. Uh, I'm going to try it. Which, just getting this movement down to retry it also is incredibly difficult. Oh, man. Yikes. That's all right. Uh, it, is, it is ridiculously precise. So what he has to do there is he has to go up a very specific height and then hold the down button and hit the shell as far as possible on the side of the shell while still moving in the direction the shell is moving so we can re-grab it. And it allows him to skip the end of the level, which is by far the most difficult thing in the level. Uh, Basically, it's one of the dumbest things I've ever done in my life, and I don't even do it in the run anymore because it's that It's stupid. very, very, very difficult to do. Very difficult. But if you would like to see it, I do do it in the world record run. Uh, so if you want to check out the shell skip. I'm not going to attempt it again. I'm going to do the intended strat here. Uh, you can check it out. You know what? Screw it. I don't care. One Let's more time? Oh, yeah, one more on. time. <laughs> For the fans. For the people. I believe. Let's let's do it. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, man. All right, that's, all right, that's, that's it. It's, it's stupid hard. I have not been practicing that's okay. it either. So the end of the level, you actually have to balance on a disco shell while dealing with this water physics where you can't swim. Uh, 
Th this level yeah. barely feels like Mario when you're playing it, honestly. It's it's very, very hard to wrap your brain around how <laughs> complex the, the inputs are uh, that you have to do. To give it an, an idea of how difficult this game is, when this game first came out and no one had seen anything, people didn't know strats, I'm also dead. Uh, it took people on average 60 hours to beat this game. And this level was like a third of that. Yeah, this was this was pretty much a, a third of, of my my blind play of this. That sounds about right. When once you get past by fire, you've basically reached the fifty percent point of the game, and there's only two levels left. <laughs> yeah, it's, I I just can't overstate how difficult this level is, and I'm dying a bunch, and it's just I'm chill because I know it's gonna happen because this level wants you to feel its suffering. Sky, would you like to uh, read a donation, please? So we have $500 from Lady Adelaide. She says, I'm a simple woman. I see Ooh. a Kaizo Mario run, I Me donate. Too. That's right. That's the move. And then you're going to have to explain this one to me. Uh, we have a $20 donation from Liz Star who says, cake, 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 cake. Shoutouts to Kez from the tech booth. If you first try Partner, I'll double my donation Hi, and Liz. I challenge everyone to join me. So what is Partner, Kez? And Child Soldier, I mentioned it earlier, if you listen to the song, there's this voice in there, and it, if you, it starts to sound like cake after a while, so the song's just going cake, cake, cake. Especially cake, after like three cake. hours of playing the level, you really start to hear cake. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Pardoner Fennel. Uh, Pardoner Fennel is the final boss of, of this mod. Uh, it is ported from the video game Momodora, uh, it's an incredibly difficult fight, uh, and it's very, very impressive that it's in SMW at all. <laughs> that is the hardest trick in the entire Get, game. I just want you. Yeah, all getting to go getting all that shell across the gap like that is is insanely precise. You have to hit it on the right side, and you have to like swing it back and then hold right and just barely catch the side of it for it to go actually across the gap. So that was. Like, I am breathing a sigh of relief. It's very sketchy. I don't know if that's... Oh, it's so it's sketchy. sketchy. This this half... I, I find this half to be more difficult in general. Like, everything is just very... It's because you're... Very precise. It's because you're... <laughs> very precise, <laughs> very tight item swimming. Uh, yeah, so the second half of this level, it uses the same gimmick where we're not allowed to swim more than once, but in Super Mario World, when you're in water and you have an item, you do something called item swimming. Uh, so the second half of this level is basically revolving around the two interactions. Uh, would you like to explain uh, how item swimming kind of so works? So item swimming, basically, uh, if you're holding an item, you'll move automatically in the direction you're facing. And if you hold that direction, you go, you'll go faster. And then in order to go down, you actually have to tap the down button. And you can go down in different increments by tapping the down button for less time. So like for something like this, you have to barely tap the down button to get very small down swims. Uh, it's especially difficult in that little tiny box where you have to go back and forth so you don't actually hit the walls and while also tapping down. So it's it's very uh, much like a tongue twister for your left thumb a lot of the times in this level, uh, trying to figure out exactly the inputs. Twister, <laughs> a tongue twister is a great way to describe this game, yes. actually. A tongue twister of uh, pain. But it's a pain that I appreciate. I, we we <laughs> despite what we say we love this uh, we love this game. This is my favorite. <laughs> this is my favorite uh, Mario game. Ever. Uh, and shout outs to to uh, Wyatt. Wyatt yeah, watching. I was gonna say thanks for making it. It's really cool. And also he did yeah, an incredible job with all of the music. Uh, I no, when, when this came out, no one had ever heard or seen anything like it. So it's very very unique, uh, even amongst the niche that is the the Kaizo Mario World community. So. Big. Yeah, this game is incredible. Um, so anyways, what we're doing here is we're going to grab the shell uh, and we're going to use this to do some shenanigans. All right, when I get there, I'm not going to, I'm going to leave that up to you. But basically, I need that shell to kill that urchin. The second urchin is not killable. And then we're going to do an incredibly tight squeeze and then hope and pray. Yeah, the, the whole end of this level is is incredibly tight and difficult. I know you hear us say that a lot, but it can't be understated <laughs> how difficult Have I mentioned <laughs> yet how dumb I am playing this, this in a marathon? I can't even believe that this game is here. <laughs> <laughs> Have I mentioned how dumb I am? Uh, 
it's very it's such a it's such a cool game and the run has come such a long way so uh yeah it's it's been very cool to watch honestly okay so this is unintended but i find this easier nice. okay so really you're supposed close. to throw the shell through the hole and then jump off the platform or, or swim off the platform and land on the moving shell. Uh, but most of us, what we do is just toss the shell up and swim up to re-grab it at the bottom. Yeah. So I had a little die there. Just my fingers were wiggly and that's okay. It's six in the morning. That's my excuse. It's a good, it excuse. A good excuse. Also, this is like the most difficult level in, in the entire game. So I think you're killing it. This is so difficult. I'm doing my best. Uh, Sky, would you like to throw a few more? Absolutely. And this way? one took me a little while to figure this one out again because of probably time of day. This one made me chuckle once I figured it out, though. Uh, we have $50 from Will Mass, who says, Good luck. Kez playing Mario on a calculator watch? And then I'm like, wait, it's Casio. I get it now. And it just, that took me a little while to get nice. that one. But... <laughs> Fun, fun fact, Kaz right, actually so, plays on a hitbox instead of a normal uh, SNES controller. Yeah, I'm not playing on an actual controller. I'm, I'm essentially playing on like a really fancy keyboard, kind of like an arcade stick, because I'm weird. But that's okay. Easy. First nice. try. Time for one more. First try. Okay, one Absolutely. more here. Uh, we have five dollars from Frozen Flygon, who says, "Cause you're an inspiration in the Kaizo Frozen. community. Thank you no, for you all are. the laughs, timeouts, and streams. Yeehaw, partner! Yee. Can I get a Can I get a no you outs. from chat? <laughs> no you. All right, so um, this is the final level of the game. This is Freaky Eyes. And if you've ever played or seen Kaizo, you know the term five-room castle. And a five-room castle is basically you have to get through five rooms before you get to the checkpoint. This is an eight-room castle, and I'm going to shut up for most of this. This level is anxiety-inducing. It's incredibly difficult, um, especially... So the first room is really hard. Like, look at that, the ball and chain at the end that you have at the time. It's very, very precise. It's a speedy boy. Uh, Wyatt used these, like, outlined Kaizo blocks as obstacles in a lot of rooms, and they're very, very creatively used. Uh, this room looks very, very difficult. It's a lot easier to execute than it is to learn, uh, because learning it requires you to just go in and die at every single turn, basically. Uh, Okay, so before I go into this next room, this next room, we're gonna do an unintended strat. So there's gonna be a bunch of booths, and the intended strat is to go right, go up around, and grab a silver P switch, and then go back down and hit it to remove a muncher. We're gonna go backwards. I might die, but we're gonna go backwards, and it's gonna be sweet. I still can't believe you go backwards, by the way. Going forwards is, is way safer and way, <laughs> way easier to do. <laughs> I also play Cassio at GDQ, so I'm not the smartest. God, that room is so community. beautiful. It's such a beautiful room. It's fantastic. Uh, this is also the one swim ASM. Yeah, so basically you just have to time your down swim so you hit the platform but not the spikes. And here comes the worst okay. room in the whole level, uh, the bat room. <laughs> this is, this is, this might look easy. This is by far the hardest room. I hate it. I despise it. And I'm probably going to die. Uh, I don't know go. why this room is so difficult. It, it seems so simple, but these last two jumps are just so precise. Oh, nice, dude. And then one more room with the bubble. Uh, I love how all the rooms revisit themes from uh, from earlier in the in the game as well. Oh, nice. All right, white wall okay. time. Okay, I'm just gonna do just it. do it. I'm just gonna do it. So it's very easy to hit the wrong block and block yourself out. Oh. Let's go, GDQ. Yo, nice, dude. Yeah. Oh my Easy. god. Right. I am breathing the Easy sigh of relief. Eyes, All right. <laughs> Easy freaky eyes. All right, chat. Well, like, I can't believe I did that. Um, <laughs> welcome to the final. We're, we're speeding through this. My estimate was 40 minutes because I expected to, to die everywhere. Uh, so this is pretty sweet. So this, welcome to the final boss. This is my favorite final boss. Uh, this is a 30 hit boss. We have to hit it 30 times. We get no power ups. We cannot take a hit. We will die. And I regret to inform you, there's going to be a lot of you that are upset. We're about to kill anime itself. Yeah, anime is going to die here. Sorry, guys. Anime is dead after this. <laughs> so I'm, I apologize in advance. You can send me mean DMs, and that's okay. 
Um, so if you've ever played Momodora Reverie Under the Moonlight, you'll you'll recognize this boss. This was made. This was ported by the creator of the hack themselves, Wyatt. Uh, and Thirdwall can talk a bit more about it. But I present to you partner Fennel. Yeehaw! All right, let's go. So uh, Fennel has a few things that she can do. She can spam lightning. So what happens with the lightning? It will it will strike once to show you where it's going to strike, and then on the second strike, it has a hitbox, and the hitbox lasts for about six frames. Uh, she can dive at you or she can swipe at you in the first phase, and then she can also move. Uh, so she only moves if you're a certain distance away, so if you stay really close to her, you can just bait attacks out of her. And by baiting attacks, you can actually get really consistent at the first phase. Second phase, a little bit more difficult. Uh, same attacks, except after the swipe, she does this big spin. Uh, dodging the big spin, really difficult, especially if she does the big spin into one of those dives. Uh, getting past the dive after, yeah, just like that. <laughs> Just like that is a really, really difficult combo. Uh, you just have to be jumping on her head basically constantly too. Uh, there, wow, twice. That's yeah. That was oh, that was a rough it. second phase though. Uh, I think this. No, that was actually pretty sec, good. Sec, but I second phase, up. second phase, easily the hardest part of the fight. Uh, By far yeah, the hardest. Uh, then the third phase, she's basically just spamming lightning at you, and then she'll take a swipe after a certain number of lightning strikes. Uh, each phase is 10 hits, and then she kind of pauses for a second. Uh, depending on where her position position is after the first phase, that can be really difficult too. You kind of want her in the center of the screen like that. If she's all the way off to the side, then it becomes a lot more difficult to get the phase started. Uh, same thing in the third phase, especially in the third phase. Because uh, the lightning, you can't, you can't jump over her if she's all the way on the side of the screen, which makes it really hard to avoid the lightning and get hits. You just have to like bait her out slowly. Let's go. I, it's still unbelievable to me that this exists in, in a Mario game. So she'll flash red, and that's when she's about to swipe. Usually gets two off. And then uh, that's and this it. is time coming up. Uh, time is now. Yo, nice. That's it. Nice we did work, it. I can't believe uh, thank you. I'm I'm astonished that I was able to do this. You didn't do I don't even know what time that was. 35 minutes. You know, I'll take it. That was good. Uh, so, yeah, I'll take it. Uh, thank you for uh, watching. I appreciate it. I'd like to give a shout out to Third Wall. Thank you for being on commentary Thanks with for me. me. Um, I also would like to give a shout out to our friend Amethyst underscore Rocks, who uh, was supposed to be on commentary, but uh, she had a, an emergency. Uh, and also shout out to Wyatt. Thank you for making this game. Um, I got to keep this short and brief, but uh, thank you all for being here. If you have any interest in, in Kaiser SMW, please go to smwcentral.net. Uh, check out Twitch. There's a lot of great players out there. Please feel free to follow Third Wall on Twitch, who's a fantastic player. Uh, and just thank everyone in my community for, uh, for supporting me. Third Wall, would you like to say anything? Uh, I just want to, again, thank Wyatt for making such an incredible game. Uh, I... This game has been ridiculously influential in the community for a reason, and uh, it's it feels really good to get to showcase it this way. So thank you, Wyatt. Uh, yeah. yeah, and thanks, Cascade, again, for having me. This was super fun. I, I love watching this game. This was super it. fun. This was a blast. <laughs> it was a blast, and it was even 6 in the morning we had fun. And now so. I can go back to sleep. Uh, GDQ, <laughs> we can go back to sleep. GDQ, have a great rest of your GDQ. Oh, yeah, get us to 2 million, to guys. Come on. Get us what to are you 2 guys million. Doing? We're almost there. Come on. What are you doing? Come on. Donate some money. <laughs> uh, so take it easy. Have a great GDQ. Bye. All right. Let's hear it one more time for Kez and Third Wall. Thank you so much for that fantastic Kaizo mod. Those are very hard to speedrun and even much more so on a GDQ stage. So well done, y'all. We have $25 from Deer Trivia who says, Did you know white-tail deer can jump up to eight feet high? That's without bouncing on a shell or a bullet bill. And I wholeheartedly agree. Let, let us push for that $2 million. We are so close to it right now. I believe we can hit it within the next couple runs. We do have a pair of ocean-themed games ahead. Very much looking forward to both of them. Speak. 
Okay, folks. And now a word from NIS America, and this will be for the cruel king and great hero. Check out the adorable NIS title, The Cruel King and the Great Hero, available March 1st on PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch. For more information on The Cruel King and the Great Hero, please go to nisamerica.com slash cruel hyphen king one. Again, that's nisamerica.com slash cruel hyphen king one. We have a $250 donation from Auntie Clock who says, you know what? Why not keep increasing that goal? Let's hit two million. Nats fan donates $500 saying video games are like the ocean. There are deep, frightening depths that none of us will never know about. A little bit of an update, too. We have several, several incentives going on here, so I wanted to run you all through that really quickly. We have the Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past bonus any percent run, currently $27,335 out of $75,000. Tetris the Grandmaster 20 G mode that is maximum speed, $2,386 out of $75,000. And another Tetris the Grandmaster secret grade showcase, $7,148 out of $20,000. So, if you would like to see any of those incentives, please get those donations in. Flair donates $250 saying, hey, AGDQ crew, thanks for the good you do. To all the runners, thank you too. And all the best for 2022. Scott Melee donates $59, saying donating $1 per death I counted in Casio Mario World. Well done, Kez. Carolyn Design donates $5.90, saying I counted... 59 deaths during Casio Mario. Here's a shiny dime for each one. Chair Chain RXN donates $200 saying, love this event and this is my favorite time of the year. Such a great way for gamers to come together for good. Thanks to all the runners and organizers. All right, folks, we're going to take a quick break. We will be right back.
Welcome back to AGDQ 2022 online. We have $75 from Radical Radical who says, as promised, here is a dollar per death during the Cassio Mario run. Was it 59? 60? Here's 75 just to be sure. Who Grooves On donates $15 saying, donated to thank the tech crew for all that they do to keep this great marathon running. Where's the emote for the tech crew? I would spam that tech crew emote so hard trying to show y'all the love. Mountain Man donates $50 saying, thanks to the team that makes this event possible, you all rock. Carmena donates $100 saying, thank you for all that you do. Good luck to all the runners and thank you for working behind the scenes to make this event happen. Hayamoto donates $250. I love speedrunning and hate cancer. Here's to finding an out-of-bounds frame clip void dash we can use to skip cancer altogether. Wingflame donates $10 saying thank you to all the runners, announcers, tech team, organizers, and anybody else I've missed for putting on another awesome marathon. Watching the incredible skills on display at AGDQ and SGDQ is a highlight of my year, and I'm always blown away by what the runners are capable of. Donation goes to announcer's choice of incentive. <laughs> 